Good morning, church. Thanks for joining us this Sunday morning online as we stream the service today. And we have a, a, a special service that myself and Maynard have uh, put together. And we hope it will inspire and bless everyone listening in this morning. Um, a quick announcement just to remind every one of us that tomorrow, that's Monday, the 25th of December, is Christmas Day. And we're going to have church. Um, we're going to gather at ECU in our usual venue, but it's going to be half an hour earlier. So the Christmas Day service starts at 9 a.m., goes for about an hour, and thereafter we're also going to have coffee and tea uh, for those of you that would like to stay a bit longer afterwards just to catch up with a few people and uh, say a few friendly hellos, then we can do that over a cup of refreshment. Now, um, this Sunday morning, the 24th, we're going to just um, use the time to again reflect on the Christmas message and this whole season, uh, the lead up to Christmas is that we're being reminded of the blessing, the joy, the good news that have come to us through Jesus being born and being made in the image of man. So um, with that said, I'll just highlight quickly the what, how we're going to do this service. Um, I'm going to do a prayer shortly. Then we're going to have two worship songs. And then we're going to have Maynard just share a short word with us today um, that fits this season of Christmas and the, the story of Jesus' birth. The two worship songs are going to be a little bit different than normal. Typically, I'd sit here with my guitar and I'd play and then we'd have words on a TV screen. But I discovered that we um, had two carols songs that we recorded in the studio. Our music team re recorded it in the studio some uh, years ago with Byron, the sound engineer friend of ours. And uh, it's two well-known songs. We sing it in church often. So what I did, I've put those uh, two songs on a video screen and I've typed in the words so that we can put it on here and the, cl the sound and clarity is going to be brilliant um, and we're going to have the words underneath and we can all sing along and it's our music team that's playing and singing with it you'll recognize the voices as well and it's two familiar songs so do uh, join us for that as we lift our hearts and worship to God um, and with that Worship in mind, let me lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you, Father God, for another day which you've added to our lives. We thank you for every breath that we take. We thank you for every moment that you give us. And even this time of year, as we lead up to Christmas Day, we are so aware of the season and the reason for it being Jesus and his birth more than 2,000 years ago. Meet with us even now, Lord, as we worship you in song, as we receive from your word when Pastor Maynard preaches. Meet with us in your word and meet with us through your Holy Spirit as well. And may you use this small service we have online today to prepare our hearts for tomorrow when we gather as a church to celebrate Christmas Day. Jesus, be glorified in all we do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, a call to worship before we start singing, I've decided to take it from Luke chapter 1. And it's a, a passage that just speaks of the glories of Jesus and what he would do. Um, and it says this, Jesus came to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. And because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the path of peace. And that's God's word. What it reminds us of that Jesus came is the light of heaven that came down to us, stepped into our darkness to shine light on our feet that we might walk in the path of peace before God. God bless you all. Let's join together in song. was born on Christmas Day. Hark now hear the angels sing a new king born today. And men will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Trumpets sound and angels sing 
sing, listen to what they say. Shepherds watch the flocks by night. They see a bright new shining star. They heard a choir sing a song. The music seemed to come from afar. When Joseph and his wife Mary came to Bethlehem that night, they found no place to bear a child. Not a single room was inside. Hark now, hear the angels sing a new king born today. And men will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Trumpet sound and angels sing, listen to what they say.
praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. I bring an offering to you. Good morning, Grace Church, and welcome to this service. I want to tell you about two of the most important characters in the Christmas story. You meet the first character in the Gospel of Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. So we start with Caesar Augustus, the ruler of the Romans. At the time this verse was written, the Roman Empire ruled the world. On this map, everything that's bright belonged to them, from Spain to the left to India on the right. Which means when Jesus was born, Caesar Augustus was the most powerful man on earth. Maybe you're wondering what he looked like. He is a statue of him. Keep in mind, that's probably not exactly how he looked. A Caesar statue was always a better version of themselves. More muscular, taller, a little bit more handsome. Your statue was a way of showing that you're a powerful person. That's why they always stood in this victorious pose. I am the ideal human being. Another way that they proclaimed their authority was by giving themselves titles. And then when the Caesar entered a town or a city, a scroll would be opened and the titles read aloud. The titles Augustus chose for himself were Son of God, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Saviour who takes away the sins of the world. He also said his birth was good news for everyone. Does that sound familiar? Where have you heard those words before? Let's go back to Luke 2. The chapter starts with a census, which is strange. If you're Augustus, you already have enough of everything. Slaves, land, wealth weapons. Why would you want a census? There could only be one reason. You want even more. The purpose of a census was to determine how much taxes each person should pay so that you could get more wealth, build more weapons, conquer more lands. They estimate that someone like Joseph and Mary would have paid between 80 and 90% of their income as taxes. Keep this in mind. Jesus' birth takes place against this backdrop of a ruler whose power knows no bounds and yet still isn't satisfied. We meet the second character in the Gospel of Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. Who is Herod? Well, he was appointed by Caesar Augustus to rule in Jerusalem on his behalf. Today we would say he is a puppet on the strings that the Caesar pulls. He was in service of the Roman Empire to make sure that his own people followed the rules. Despite that, he achieved incredible things. 
He built the world's largest port. He wanted to build a palace on top of a mountain. Unfortunately, the area was too flat. So he decided to build a mountain for his palace. He rebuilt the temple by having stones that weighed 80 tons each stacked 30 meters high. The details don't really matter, but hopefully you get a sense of how Herod could snap his fingers and things would happen. But out of the blue, Magi come to Jerusalem and ask, where is the one who was born King of the Jews? And immediately Herod is disturbed. In one translation it says, he was terrified. Do you see how ironic the situation is? Here's one of the wealthiest, most influential people in the history of the world. And yet he feels threatened by a baby. That's why he decides to have him killed. I can't have anyone take my place on the throne. If you were a threat to their power, you paid with your life. Today, when people want to show that they're a Christian, they usually wear a cross. The first Christians preferred the symbol of a fish, ichtus in their language. And if you split the letters of the word ichtus, it can be an acronym that says, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. They use the titles the Caesar chose for himself and applied it to Jesus as a way of saying there's only one true king, not Caesar, not Herod, Jesus. So what does this mean for you one day before Christmas? In Romans, you read, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. It talks about the contrast between a mind governed by the spirit and a mind governed by the flesh. What does it mean by hostility? It's something like, no one tells me what to do. I want to decide what's best for me. Hostility is when you want to be in control of things rather than giving it over to God. And do you see the implication is there's a little bit of Herod that lives in every human heart. I want to be on the throne of my own life. One of my favorite authors writes these words. According to the Bible, the evil of the world ultimately stems from the self-centeredness, self-righteousness and self-absorption of every human heart. Each of us wants the world to orbit around us and our needs and our desires. This morning, I want to remind you about Jesus' birth. He is the King of creation which means we can't be. Have you surrendered your whole self to him? Or are there still parts of your life where you cling to control? In Romans, he says, the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. May you be reminded this morning that Jesus offers peace and life to you. Trust him. Come to him this morning and in spirit bow before him. Let's pray. Lord, we confess that there are parts of our lives that we still want to remain in control of. Where we want to be on the throne and we want to decide what happens. There is still a part of Herod inside the human heart. 
And I want to pray and ask that this morning you would convict us and show us the part in our lives where we don't yet fully trust you, where we're still clinging. And that this morning we would bring those things to you, trust you with them. We proclaim you are the only God of creation. We bow our full and whole selves before you. You are King of Kings, Lord of Lords. The Savior takes away the sins of the world and your birth is good news for everyone because you give life and peace to us all. Thank you, church, for joining us for this uh, online service of today. And I hope that this word that uh, Maynard has shared would encourage all of us to live a life that glorifies God and puts him on the throne in our hearts. Uh, just a gentle reminder again, tomorrow morning, uh, the Christmas Day service is 9 a.m. we start. So be there uh, in time to get a seat and to join us as we worship Jesus and thanking him, celebrate him on Christmas Day and all that it means. God bless you all.